Rubber is a substance all alone. It takes on the character of the person who is wearing it. And it will take on the customer's mood. It's a queer, queer material. And yet a very lovable material. I should say latex is a lady. Rubber is the second skin. It's the nearest thing, if you're sensitive enough to understand or feel it. It is like a skin, really. Whereas leather is pretty rough, isn't it? Plastic has that sort of thick, funny sort of feel about it. Sticky. Rubber is smooth. It's just like touching the skin. Leather is another thing entirely. It's like the feel against your skin. People get off and the smell or yeah. just the look of it. This leather is incredibly soft. Again, uh, leather people do like the smell of leather, the feel of leather. Leather is only skin, isn't it? You know yourself, your own skin will last you for the rest of your life if you look after it. Well, so should leather. People who do like this man-made material demand only patent vinyl. This one that I'm wearing at the moment, it's made of vinyl, patent vinyl, which gives it this shiny look. We constructed this particular suit uh, with zips in the front of the uh, uh, instep here so that the owner um, could wear it over a rubber suit and this would facilitate uh, getting the feet into the uh, into the one piece built on foot part. Um, it has a ring that's coming through the collar here um, as I say, were attached to the helmet and then the chain goes through the rings and the chain is padlocked at the back so that the helmet can't be removed. Um, people who like to feel even more restricted than I am at the moment uh, go in for lots of wrist straps, ankle straps, more straps around the waist and uh, possibly around the thighs with addition of chains and so on, or makes it more fun, or makes it a bit more restrictive. provided for normal sexual intercourse in 100% in, in of the cases, yeah. yes. Um, zips or um, else an open crotch covered with a bathing slip like um, cover, both in male and female. And um, <coughs> I think one will be approved if one attempted to suggest that this wasn't uh, the normal expectation of, of, of this does, since it has such a close sexual connotation the whole time. Go on, Helen. What about? Get Jordan to put on some rubber clothes. What clothes? <laughs> Helen, tell me what clothes. What clothes? Well, uh. Get the A-line skirt. I think. Skirt. Yeah, I think you could, I could have the A-line skirt. You know, the, not the short one, yeah. the one that comes back here. And yeah. and the blouse with the zip. I'll be able to find it, will I? And yeah, stockings. it's all down there. Do you want suspenders? Some rubber stockings, I think. All in black. And how, you, how do you keep the stockings up? They'll stay up on their own. It's all do they? Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
day to choose to put rubber clothes on. We're having a heat wave. I've got a rather strange theory of my own. Somewhere there was a mistranslation of the scriptures. After all, at the present time, we're saying that the cradle of mankind is Africa. And I think rubber leaves are a lot more comfortable than fig leaves. And it's quite possible that Eve found it so. And uh, also, she was tempted by the serpentine stuff that appeared on the tree and found that she could use it. And like every other woman, uh, used the wrong thing for the right purpose and managed to uh, manipulate some rubber. She probably managed that. I would say that's as good a theory as any other pseudo-scientific theory that's going. <laughs> The people that have come in from the Macintosh Society actually just wear rubber Macintoshes. Mm. It's really strange that the whole thing can revolve around like one garment almost. Mm. We have their magazines, which are all just really Macintosh orientated about little stories, skits about somebody who'd see a young girl in a rubber Macintosh mm. getting onto a school bus. It's all on the fantasy level, really. Dress in their rubber wear, show it off and have a great time, eat and drink. The society features um, country rambles throughout the year for the benefit of members. Um, they there are an awful lot of people who like to uh, slush around in, in the rain and um, the muddier it becomes, the better they like it and they get their wellies on and they're sort of knee deep in mud and oh yes, this, this heightens the attraction but for every five of those there's a hundred that just like a woman wearing rubber garments or rubber mats rubberized satin caftan, the hood. Oh dear, struggling. I've been in crowds and you can pick out a rubber mat amongst 30,000 people because you can hear it. To the enthusiast, caftan. they can tell. That's the difference between being interested and just being attracted, I suppose. These are the only really 100% waterproof garments that have ever been made and, and probably ever will be. Well, that's, that's the beauty of it. You can walk out and feel normal and you have the pleasure of knowing it's not normal. <laughs> I started off, the very first um, outfit I got was riding breeches and a very plain tunic with rubber riding boots. I added to that a heavy floor length cloak which has got a, a red latex lining which contrasted against the riding breeches and the jacket very nicely and then followed the inevitable head mask. Now 
I always had the affinity for masks. I can't explain why. And the childish fantasies of being frogmen or human torpedoes really appealed to me. In 1947, my parents took me to Butlin's holiday camp in Patheli. And that would be round about the first time I knew anything about the existence of the frogmen exploits of World War II. There were two frogmen there. There was the husband, who I believe claimed to be a wartime frogman, and his wife, who gave frequent displays in the swimming pool. I never missed one because the sight of the tight-fitting, watertight black rubber suits and all the breathing apparatus really appealed to me. And I suppose rather than fighter pilots or bomber pilots, the frogmen and the human torpedoes became my heroes. I haven't got the figure which um, merits using a tight-fitting suit, and I prefer to have the loose-fitting suit because it allows the rubber to slide over the skin, and it's the contrast, I think, between the warm rubber, which is immediately in contact with the skin, when one moves, that parts, and by and large, the cooler rubber comes in contact with the skin, so you get the contrast. That is as near I can describe the sensation of wearing a rubber suit. This is a rubber latex warrior mask. As you can see, it has a visor at the front, which you can remove and push back, so the person wearing it can see through the cellophane. Underneath is revealed the actual mask. It's made of latex and will fit to the skin like a second skin. The apparatus below is something you can feed into the nose, and the person who is the partner can control the breathing. This valve can stop the air altogether until the point comes when it's possible, unless the mask is removed, that you will die. You'll get people coming in and really laughing at the rubber wear. And I find it very strange because I just tell them, like, piss off. You know, I really shout at them. Guys who, who pick something up and say, fucking hell, what's this? And there's a, a man there actually trying to decide whether to buy something or not. And I've had a lot of rows thrown them out the door because um, not only does it lose a sale, but it sort of destroys the whole atmosphere of the shop and the fact that we're trying here to, to um, to bring everything together and not to have to segregate things. And that's all to do with sort of legitimizing the idea of rubber wear as well, even on a fetish level. Black rubber men's gloves. Black latex heavy duty long evening gloves. Black rubber brazier. Black latex molded bra. 
black latex stockings, gold peep hole brassier with crutchless knickers. People might wear rubber wear in the Men's evening, but, but uh, just really to shock people and not rubber. actually to feel it's part of themselves or Blue part of their everyday string. clothing. But I suppose I'm, I'm very much um, Pink rubber in the minority. Knickers. Not many people do wear the Men's sort of clothes I wear pants. all day, every day, or even for Sunday dinner, or even to go play to I have suit. nothing else in my wardrobe. The British Rail sort of, they knew the trouble I was going through and at Seaford, which is the, the terminal where I live. They said one day to me that they had let me travel first class with my second class ticket every day from Lewis to Seaford because of the trouble they knew I was having. So they were really sweet about that. I've had an awful lot of trouble. One woman, especially, who had the whole train in uproar, had a terrible argument about whether I was indecent or not, and whether I was upsetting her seven-year-old son. Uh, was, well, I told her to move if I was upsetting her, especially I, as I was um, very, very conservatively dressed that day, and she was trying to make out that I was upsetting her son. Of course, uh, a dress from here, a mini dress with tassels on it, that just undoes to about here, which shows like the barest part of cleavage, a tiny bit quite figure-hugging. I mean, nothing like the stuff I normally wear. She came out with a line like, are you a stripper? And I said, well, you look more like a common or garden stripper anyway than I ever would. And uh, she freaked out a bit. She, she asked the guy next door, door to her, you've got children. If you've got children, would you let them see her like this? He said, yeah, I've got children. They'd love her. I draw the line at making some of the things that appear in pornographic magazines, showing sex organs and all that sort of thing, because I think that's overdone anyway. That market's catered for. I'm catering for people who love rubber. There are so many brilliant colours in it, like this pearl mauve, pearl pink. Um, that it just tempts one to create. And I love doing garments in it. hole in the piece of latex is a potential danger because although the material will stretch like that if you pierce it look what happens I think a lot of our customers very, very lonely people. And some of them have become friends of ours. We found out that sort of when they eventually get married, some of them completely give rubber up. And this, I think, is because for some reason or other, whether it's some sort of childhood association, I haven't a clue what it is, but I have just found that a, a, quite a number of rubber, you know, lovers are rather lonely people. Mm. So maybe loneliness, um, has something to do with it. Well, I have had one customer say to me that he, for some reason, had not been able to get married. And he creates his own family. And he has a girl's outfit, a woman's outfit, and a man's outfit, so that he's husband, wife, and child. He's a very, very lonely man. And he does, he's not a transvestite. He merely is creating a family in his mind, a fantastic. Fantasia, really. There is a particular girl I know who suffers from agoraphobia. And in normal daily life, she is very shy, reserved, 
put her into a complete all-over rubber suit, which she adores, she becomes a totally different character due to the fact that she is totally enclosed in rubber. You say that a rubber mask and helmet is probably a bit uncomfortable to wear. She doesn't appear to find it so at all, and you put her into an all-enclosing rubber suit. She becomes what I call a normal person. I think what is normal is an activity that can be carried on acceptably and pleasurably and provided other people are not outraged, then I think this is a perfectly normal activity. we are set up and we are prepared to make anything that people ask for we therefore have to establish a pretty strong line of demarcation on that score and that is we will not make anything which will cause indescribable pain to a third party in other words we won't give a husband a pair of thumb screws to force needles under his wife's fingernails or something like that and we obviously wouldn't make anything which is obviously illegal. Things for uh, escape purposes after crime or anything like that. But other than those restrictions of something which is going to cause a wife or a girlfriend unbearable pain or something which is illegal, uh, other than those, we will make anything that people want. 